Hello everybody. Welcome to Sermon on the Go. Today my theme is God will establish you. God will establish you. And my case study for today is David. His beginning was nothing to write home about. He was the least of his brethren. He was left alone in the desert to take care of his father's flock. He was not remembered when time came to be selected as a king. He was considered a weakling, not fit for war. He was a target for execution by King Saul. He became a fugitive in his own land, and as a king, he fell into error with Bathsheba and eventually killed her husband. His own son tried to overthrow his government with this horrible and horrific life profile. How did David ended up being called a man after God's own heart? David was not perfect, but clearly there are some attributes that we can learn from David. Number 1. David was a servant. You see, you can look for God and miss God, but God cannot look for you and miss you. The Bible says, "I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him." with whom my hand shall be established and also my arm will strengthen him. God is looking for servants, not masters. Your lifting is as a result of your servanthood. Jesus said to his friends, whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant and whoever desires to be the first shall be slave of all for even the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many it is service that leads to greatness don't allow pride shame and arrogance stop you from serving god when you serve god he prospers you and you enjoy divine health and above all, your eternal life is secure. Second, David was a man of courage. He killed a lion and a bear and faced Goliath without fear. Courage is the quality that enables you to rise up to any challenge without giving way to fear. Without a lion's heart, you cannot get a lion's share. Then David said to the men who stood by, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? All the promises of God minus courage will amount to nothing. The interesting thing is that David and his brothers had the same covenant. They all had the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But they were all shaken when they were confronted by Goliath because they all had different mentality. But God was looking for somebody with a courageous heart. And David declared war on Goliath by saying, you this uncircumcised Philistine, I will kill you and bring your head down. You either have a fearful image about your own self or an image about God concerning yourself or an image about the devil concerning yourself and finally an image of what other people think of you. Therefore, it is either you believe in what God says about you or you believe in what the devil says about you or you believe in what your own wrong senses says about you or you believe in what other people says about you 
low self-esteem and fearful mentality is the reason for many failures in many people's life. Stop complaining and go and conquer. Stop talking about lack of money and resources. Stop giving excuses. Rise up and confront your challenges. Stand on the integrity of God's word and declare war on that obstacle, on that crisis in your life. Step out in faith like David did when he was confronted with Goliath and be positive about life. Thirdly, David was kind. David said, Is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Most kings in David's day tried to wipe out the families of their rivals in order to prevent any descendant from seeking their throne. But David showed kindness to Mephibosheth, whose father was Jonathan and whose grandfather was King Saul, who wanted to kill David. David was kind because of his loyalty to God's anointed king in the person of Saul. David's kindness was also for political reasons, to unite Judah and Israel, and mainly because of his vow to show kindness to the descendant of Jonathan. The fourth and final attribute we can take away from David is that he was generous and sacrificial. David said, Moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, in addition to all I have prepared for the holy temple, I have a private treasure of gold and silver, which I will give to the house of my God. The secret of abundance is hidden in sacrificial giving, whereas the secret of lack is as a result of lack of giving in tithes and offering. It doesn't matter how small or little, start giving sacrificially. Be generous in your giving financially in support of the church and for the ministry of the gospel. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Therefore, in addition to God's blessing, people will also give to you. People will show you favor and you will have an abundance increase of blessings in your life. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall never cease. The more you give, the more you expand your capacity to receive more from God. Friends, in order for God to establish you in everything you do, you must emulate David and learn to become a servant of God. Be courageous and kind and be generous and sacrificial in your giving to the ministry of God's church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today's message. And we thank you for your servant, David. We pray that as we have heard this message, that you will help us to emulate your servant, David. Help us to become your servant in your kingdom. Help us to be courageous and kind and be generous in our giving. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Friends, don't forget to subscribe, follow me on YouTube, and share this message. I shall see you on Thursday. Shalom. Peace. <laughs>